Hello everyone. In this video I will be describing the scoring engine for the Oman Eco House Design Competition. So uh, the agenda here, first I'm gonna um, I'm gonna go through each of the the, sh the worksheets as you can see at the bottom of the screen here um, to briefly describe each of those. Um, then we're going to simulate what will happen during the first couple days of the competition. I'll enter some um, some fake data to show you how the scoring engine works. And then finally we're going to run through some scenarios where a hypothetical team earns all the available points, no available points, and half of the points. You'll see what I mean when we get to that point. Um, just a few general comments first. Uh, as you can see the scoring engine was developed in Microsoft Excel and um, I developed it in Excel 2013, but there are no external data connections in this spreadsheet, and there's also no uh, there's there are no macros or Visual Basic code, which means that uh, because there's none of these dependencies, the spreadsheet should work in any version of Excel since 2007 um, without needing to have a internet connection or download data from an external source um, and uh, and you could also run the spreadsheet you, d you do not have to be in um, open it in macro mode and, and enable security and all that uh, so hopefully that makes this as um, cross-platform and uh, usable by everybody as, as much as possible um, so the, regarding the size of the file, it, it'll start at about 60 kilobytes when the competition begins, and then by the end of the competition, it will grow to about, I think it's going to be about 4 megabytes after all the data is inputted during the, during the 30 days of the competition. So it's a relatively small file. Um, the, the file will be viewable using Office web apps, if you're familiar with those. Um, so it'll be viewable and downloadable from the scoring website, which will be online by the time the competition begins, the evaluation period begins. All right, so I'm going to get into it here. First, I'm going to describe each of the sheets um, and uh, and just, just some general high-level comments about each of them. We'll get into more detail later on. So the first sheet is called the scoreboard. and uh, this is the one that this is the sheet you'll probably be referring to the most because it aggregates everything up to the contest score level and the competition score level. As you can see, the eight contests are listed on the left here, and then the overall competition is the bottom row. Uh, column C through E, the, the hidden column, by the way, is uh, it's just abbreviations of the contest, which I use throughout the rest of the the engine, but I hid that because it's really just taking up space that you don't need, um, or that you do need. So column C through E here, what this does is it lists the total available points for each contest and overall for the competition, how many points have been awarded so far uh, to the current point in time, and then what percent complete that contest or the overall competition is. Uh, and you'll see how that works as we go on. Uh, next we have a section here, columns F through J shows it's blank right now but it, what it will show is the ranking of each team in each of the contests as well as overall and um, if there's a T in front of the ranking, so for example if it says T3 that means you're tied for third place and again we'll see more of this later. Uh, next we have the net scores. So there's we have net scores, we have net penalty slash bonus points, and then we have gross scores. So, um, whoop, cursor got away from me there. So really uh, think about this from right to left actually. Um, in the gross scores, these are all the um, all the scores added up without penalty and bonus points included. Then all the penalty and bonus points are listed in this section and then finally when when you add up the gross scores and then the, the penalties or bonus points you get the net scores 
and the rankings are based on net scores. That's what that's really the important number is the net, not the gross. Um, which is why I put the gross all the way on the right because it may be hidden when you first pull up the uh, pull up Excel here. Um, okay, so that's the uh, that, that's the scoreboard page, the one that you'll be referring to the most, I assume. The next four pages are black, as you can see here. And um, I did that because, uh, just to indicate to myself, that these are the four sheets where data will be entered, where, where I'll be entering data. The remaining sheets, which are gray, are more for administrative purposes, as you'll see. So first we have the monitor data calcs. This is where all the data from, actually let me, uh, let me hide the ribbon here to give ourselves more room. Um, so this is where all the data from the data logger is going to be, is going to be entered. Um, and again, the data logger is producing data. It's probably, I'm probably going to set it to produce data every 20 seconds, but the data that the scores are based on is aggregated to the hour. So, um, so essentially there's, there's going to be uh, 24 records in this table per team per day, one for each hour. Um, and uh, so the, and my general convention here is that green headings indicates data that always has to be entered. Black are columns that are calculations and uh, are never going to be manually edited. And then finally blue indicates overrides and I'll describe them more later. But green or green is uh, is where there's always going to be data entered. And so this sheet um, it includes the raw data from the data logger and and then it goes all the way through the process of of calculating the um, calculating the percent of available points that you earn um, and then and then calculating how many points are earned based on that percentage of maximum uh, and there's also and you can see here that there are columns for each of the zone temperatures as well as further to the right is all of the zone relative humidities that's because there are going to be four temperature and humidity probes in each house and as you know, the, the reading that is most out of spec uh, per the criteria in the rules is the one that counts. And, and you'll see how that all works when I enter data in here. Next, we have the, um, the tasks sheet. And this is where all the data and all the calculations and, and, all, the, and all the scores will be located for the, all the task completion um, subcontests which are all located in contest seven. Let me go back to the scoreboard here, which is the appliances, lighting, and electronics contest. So for that first sheet, the monitor data calcs, that includes data and scores for all of comfort zone, um, for the refrigerator and freezer components of the appliances, lighting, electronics contest, because, and that's because the refrigerator and freezer data comes from the data logger. So that's why it's in the monitor data calcs sheet. And it also includes the data that's used to calculate the score for energy balance. Next, we have the, the sheet for the juried contests. And if we just go back to the scoreboard again, that sheet includes the data for the first five contests, which, uh, which are highlighted right here. It's very simple. All it is is a percent of max um, max available points, wh which is awarded by each of the juries. And um, it, it just so happens that each of each of those juried contests is worth 100 points maximum. So therefore the percent, uh, the percent in this case is actually equal to the number of points you earn because each is worth 100. And finally in the black, in the series of black sheets is the penalties and bonuses sheet. And this uh, this will include, for example, the bonus points that some of the teams will earn for completing construction by certain dates. It will also include 
penalties which are which may be assessed during the course of the competition. Uh, positive numbers in the points column indicate a bonus and negative points indicate a penalty and these these points whether positive or negative are all added up by the uh, the section on the scoreboard sheet um, called net penalty bonus points so those four sheets are where the uh, all the data is entered and the scores are calculated the remaining sheets as I said are for uh, administrative purposes and by the way I'll, I'll, I'll say that the the spreadsheet is structured somewhat like a database and um, because more and more Excel is is has features that enable it to be used as a database uh, most notably of those most notable of those is the structured references capabilities that it has so and that makes all of the formulas much easier to read and it really does allow the database or the uh, the spreadsheet to act somewhat like a database um, where there's a bunch of tables and the tables are sort of linked together and queries are performed so the, the advantage of using Excel is that you have all the data and all the formulas pretty much at a glance and it's very easy to make modifications if there's bugs um, or the, especially the need to override data which I indicated is in the blue the columns with the blue headers um, all of these capabilities would be very difficult and expensive to implement fully in a database so Excel seemed appropriate for this application um, okay so the first of these gray tabs the element groups this is where the uh, where, where the uh, whereas the scoreboard sheet only breaks things down to the level of contests this element groups sheet breaks it down one level further also into sub contests so you can see here that um, that let me highlight the section I'm talking about here um, all of these rows are related to the appliances lighting and electronics contests each of them are sub contests in that contest and here are the sub contest numbers um, as listed in the rules this column is how many points are available for each of those sub contests or or element groups that I use the term element group to to um, to define to describe any component of the competition that has a number of available points assigned to it um, so it's the, kind of the most granular level of the competition structure next column shows how many elements are part of that particular element group so for example there are 600 according to the current schedule there are 696 um, hours during the evaluation period each of those hours is uh, assigned a score for the temperature uh, the temperature subcontest in this case so in order to calculate in the next column the the number of points per element you you simply divide in this in this example of the temperature subcontest you divide 75 by which is the total number of available points divide that by 696 which is the, the number of individual or elements or hours in this case and you get 0 0.108 points per element you can see the formula up here is obviously very simple in that case some of the other contests like the juried contests and energy balance are based on one element so for example the architecture jury assigns one score for the team for the entire competition um, and therefore uh, that's why that's so simple it's not broken down into all these different elements and finally the last five columns here are the the scores for each respective team um, and you'll see those start to increase as we go through the uh, go through the simulate the simulated competition that I'm gonna present next we have the criteria sheet which is very important um, many of the calculations the score calculations refer back to this table here um, this includes all the criteria the numerical criteria from the rules document so for example say the temperature subcontest the way that works is that teams earn zero points if they're below if they're at or below 22 degrees C they are or if they're above 
at or above 30 degrees C, they earn all the available points for that particular hour if their temperature is between 25 and 27 degrees C, and then they earn partial points based on a linear scale if the temp is between 22 and 25 or between 27 and 30. And so those are the, uh, so these are the um, kind of the inflection points of the of the curves. I don't know if inflection point is the right term, but um, it's where the linear the linear um, functions defined in the rules change slope, basically. Um, so refer back to the rules to see if you if you're not sure what these criteria mean. They're described in much more detail in the rules. So these numbers just come straight from the rules document. And obviously they're critical when the uh, when you take, for example, four temperature measurements and you need to calculate a score from it, from those temperatures. Uh, this this table is is critical. Next we have the schedule sheet, and all this does is list all the um, all the hours, or you make I, in the rules they're called scored periods for the monitored the monitored uh, contests, which include the monitored element groups, which include temperature, humidity, refrigerator, freezer, and energy balance. So each of those is its most granular element level is hourly. On the other hand, we have the tasks, which are the, their their granularity only goes down to the day, the level, the daily level. So there are a total of 29 days in the in the evaluation period that include tasks tasks being hot water clothes washer dishwasher cooking home electronics and lighting I think I've got them all there um, so each of those take place once per day and again the uh, these tables are used in formulas throughout the the rest of the scoring engine next we have a validation sheet all this does is this provides the this is basically a lookup these are lookup tables for some of the some of the columns in other um, in other sheets for example if I go to the tasks sheet the team um, there, there's there's validation there's data validation happening here in this cell and so if the user tries to enter something other than these five teams like AAA uh, you're not allowed to um, so this cell and basically this entire column uses data validation that refers back to the lookup table that I just showed you and same thing goes for the the dates that actually refers back to the schedule sheet um, and there's also the abbreviations of the um, of the different contests which is used in the uh, in the penalty and bonuses sheet that's where this drop down is populated. And next we have energy balance summary. Uh, all this does is add up the hourly net energy in the houses and, and produces the sum. And at the bottom here, this is a flag. It's either zero or one. Um, I'll change it to one once we get to the end of the evaluation period. And that's when all the, that's when the energy balance score needs to be calculated um, because that that contest is unique in that the energy balance contest I'm referring to is unique in that um, the score is not even though data is being collected and, and is and is accumulating during the course of the evaluation period the score is not assigned until the very end um, because the scoring algorithm looks at the total cumulative net energy for the entire evaluation period and that's what the scoring algorithm is based on. So this flag basically tells the scoring engine to go ahead and calculate the score. And finally this miscellaneous sheet all this is is sort of an area uh, where I may do things like pivot tables here's a couple simple examples and uh, charts things like that if in case there's troubleshooting that needs to be done or analysis um, this this sheet or additional sheets that I may add after this would be the place for that. All right, so that is the quick rundown of all the sheets. And next I'm going to um, 
simulate about simulate the first couple days of the competition and um, uh, what I'll basically do is be is say all right first we have you know I'll, I'll enter score I'll enter data in the in the order in which I'll be entering it most likely during the evaluation period and this is obviously made up data so uh, the data itself is not important I just want you to see how the scoring engine works how um, the purpose of the different columns and and the calculations that, that take place things like that so what we'll do if we think about it the first thing that will happen that affects the scores has actually well I guess the very first thing is that the um, contest one the conceptual design and design development uh, jury has already done its did they, they did their um, their evaluation a couple years ago so those numbers are available but they're not going to be entered in the in the engine here until just before the juried contest results are announced and that'll be sometime in December most likely so actually the first scores that will be the first data that will be visible to everybody in the scoring engine here is the bon are the bonuses that were awarded or that will be awarded for finishing um, construction by certain dates so for, for example we know already that HCT has earned 50 points for completing construction by the August deadline so here I'll enter the team and again I could have used this pull down here picked HCT Oop. enter 50 points and I have the formatting set so that it shows plus or minus just so you, it's clear that whether it's a bonus or a penalty so in this case they get 50 points added it's a bonus and what contest does this apply to well it actually doesn't apply to a particular contest it applies to the whole competition so I'm going to select comp here and the bonus is not discussed in the rules that was that was um, specified by the research council externally to the rules the notes I'll just say briefly here um, bonus caps lock on bonus for August I think it was August 30th completion these notes are just for they're just for note purposes they're not they're not considered in any of the formulas in the engine here so uh, that is, that's been entered and if we go back to the scoreboard we'll see that um, we'll see that for HCT they have a gross score of zero for the overall competition they've been awarded 50 bonus points again this is HCT and the and the bonus points were applied to the overall competition not to a particular contest so they have plus 50 there and again I just to re, just to review from earlier gross score plus the net of the penalty and bonus points equals net score so 0 plus 50 is 50 and um, the the ranking doesn't appear yet because this cell here is 0 percent once the competition officially begins with some measurements that's when the competition's underway and you'll see these rankings appear alright so that's the first thing that would happen is uh, th those bonus points would be applied uh, next if we look at the schedules sheet here the first day of the monitored the monitored uh, contest elements is takes place from 12 it takes place at 12 noon on November 3rd Monday this timestamp indicates the end of the scored period so 1300 means that's the end of the one hour period between 12 noon and 1 p.m. so 1400 would be between the, the aggregate of the data between 1 p.m. and 2 p.m. Um, now in the task element schedule here you can see that the first day of tasks is Tuesday November 4th so basically there are there's um, starting at noon on the 3rd all the way up until 9 a.m. on the 4th the only thing that's happening or that's happened that produces scores would be the uh, the measured the monitored contest so or the monitored 
uh, I'll call them element groups again, the monitored element groups. So that would be temperature, humidity, refrigerator, and freezer. And energy balance measurements, or the net energy for the whole house, will be measured and will appear in the spread in the uh, engine here, the spreadsheet. But um, but again, the score for that is not calculated until the very end of the competition. So I'm going to go here to the monitor data calc sheet. And let's say, um, all right, so let's say we get, uh, I'm trying to think in terms of the actual chronology. So what happens is on the morning of, uh, what day is that? November 4th, before you all start with your tasks, I'll wake up early. And this is probably the schedule that I'll get on where I'll wake up early. I'll pull the data in from since the previous data update. So I'll pull the data in in this case ever since uh, uh, noon on the 3rd and I'll enter it here in the spreadsheet. So let's say for example start with Dofar. We have um, let's say I wake up at uh, I don't know 6 p.m. 6 a.m. and at that point we're gonna have data between noon and 6 a.m. on Tuesday there. So what is that? About 18 hours of data. So I'll enter that there, enter those timestamps there, indicate that all these rows apply to DOFAR, and then enter some temperature data, some temperature, humidity, and, and so on uh, for each of those hours. So let's say, for example, this team did really well. They were at 26 degrees. Let me just assume, again, this is just for examples sake, um, 26 degrees, all, all four temperature measurements, temperature probes read 26 degrees, and they didn't change for all those, all that period of time. And let's say they read 60% relative humidity. So just copy that over. And let's say the fridge temperature is three degrees. I think if we go to the criteria sheet, look at refrigerator between 1.1 and 4.4 is full points. So if they were at three degrees, that means they're fine for full points. Freezer is maximum temperature for full points and minimum 15 to 29. So let's say they were at minus 20 for all those hours. And um, let's say that they, most of it was the overnight period, so let's say that they used one kilowatt hour per hour during that period. And these two columns here, this is simulated measured net energy and simulated typical net energy. Um, I'm not going to get into that here. That has to do with the normalization. Um, that is going to happen well after the competition, the, the evaluation period begins, after the building energy models are, are created for, for the different buildings and after the weather data is available. So I'll leave those blank for now and uh, they'll be entered sometime during the evaluation period. So if we look here we can see that um, I won't explain each and every cell because uh, that would take a long time. So let me jump ahead. You'll remember I entered 26 degrees for for all those temperatures so because 26 degrees is between the required temperature range, the team earned 100% of the available points for all of those scored periods. And they, if you look at each sensor one by one, they earned 100% for each of the sensors. Now what the scoring engine does at the end is that it says um, in this calculated temp percent of max column, it says, okay, which is the worst? Which is which of the four sensors would have earned the lowest percentage of maximum available points uh, by itself? And it takes the minimum or the worst of those four sensors. So that's why there's a min function here. Um, in this case, all of the sensors were within spec. So the minimum is 100%. And then let me delete this here. That's an override. I'll talk about that later. Um, then this column here, 
uh, it, it determines it this is where we go back to the element group sheet this is what the formula does it goes back to the element group sheet it looks at the number of points per element and it assigns points based on the percent of max and then th it multiplies that by the number of points per element so the team earned point one oh seven seven dot 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 points for that hour and if you look here that's what this this is rounded off but um, point one oh eight points per element so that's why the team earned if you round this up point one oh eight points for each of the elements and an element here is an hour so um, that's how that's generally how that works um, all these other columns are for are in case of problems and I'll explain that more later um, but the number that really counts this is what your score is is the final temp points all right now the uh, humidity uh, the humidity score works really the same way as the temperature except the uh, the criteria are different so the um, the allowed obviously the allowed relative humidities that humidity range is different than it is for temperature and the formulas uh, like I said before refer to the criteria sheet for all those um, the minimums and the maximums allowed and for full points and partial points all right so here the team again earned 100 percent for each of each of the uh, humidities and therefore the the worst of those four is 100 percent this is how many points they earned for each of the hours and next we have the refrigerator and the freezer which we'll kind of look at those together if there's enough room here um, so for the refrigerator again the calculated percent of max is 100% because 3 degrees is within the range. They've earned this number of points for that hour and so it all looks good for the refrigerator. Same thing for the freezer, minus 20 is, is within the allowed specs for the freezer. And if you recall I entered minus 1, that means a net consumption of 1 kilowatt hour for each of these hours and that brings us to the end of the sheet by the way this schedule column I probably should hide this but because it might be confusing if it's one that means that this timestamp here in column B is included in the list of uh, the list of timestamps during the measured evaluation period so what may happen is that we're gonna have we're gonna be collecting some data before the the evaluation period begins and I may not include that in the engine here but if I do this would be a zero because the timestamp that shows up here would not appear in the list of timestamps during the evaluation period in the schedule sheet alright so um, if we look at so again I mean this is 18 hours of, of, of data here the team has earned some points. Um, keep in mind that none of the other teams are listed here, but what I would do is uh, is basically what um, essentially let's let me just show you an example here. We'll say actually let me just enter it directly. Um, GU Tech, for example, they have let's actually uh, let me enter the all these timestamps there they are I'll just drag down the team name and then I would go ahead and enter all the data for GU Tech and then I would move on to HCT and SQU and NESWA so um, so that's how that would work let me delete this for now and then the next time I update this sheet would probably be let's see this is 6 a.m. at 9 a.m. you begin the tasks on November 4th but keep in mind that all these measurements are continuing during that period so sometime after the tasks are complete so they end at noon I'll need some time to process all the data from the tasks to analyze uh, 
all that uh, all that data related to the tasks. And once I'm ready to do that, I will let's say that gets completed at 3 p.m. Um, what I would do is enter. I would move on to the tasks sheet here and start entering start entering the uh, the task data. And at the same time, after I'm done with that, I'll go right ahead and update the monitor data calc sheet with all the data that was collected between 6 a.m. and 3 p.m. in this example. And then the next time I would update this sheet after that would probably be around 6 a.m. the following morning. So there will be, nominally, there will be um, two updates of the monitor data calcs sheet per day and obviously one update of the task sheet because there's only one task per day anyway. And um, the juried contest sheet obviously only gets only gets um, populated one time at the very end uh, right before or actually right after the scores are announced at some kind of event in December. All right so let me enter some example um, example data for the tasks. So again our example team that we're using is DOFAR um, and the scheduled time is these are the tasks that took place on November 4th um, and there's no time time here actually because this is a these are daily tasks so the time is irrelevant all right so for the hot water task let's say that the minimum so the minimum uh, temperature to earn full points is uh, 43 so let's say the team had 50 degrees you need to draw at least 150 liters. Let's say they got to 160. Um, maybe they went a little bit over. Uh, and you need to do all this. You need to draw that 160 liters of water in no more than 180 or 1800 seconds, which is 30 minutes. So let's say let's say they stopped right at 30 minutes, 1800 seconds. All right. So the team earned. 100% of the available points for that hot water task. Next we move on to the clothes washer. Now uh, tasks such as the clothes washer and the other tasks uh, list to the right of this, listed to the right of this, that only have a percent of max green, green field are based purely on the percent of the maximum that I as the contest official decide is appropriate. And I'll be coming up with that number, that percent of max, based on a review of any number of things. The, the data that's being collected by the data logger. So for example, the power profile of the clothes washer cycle, I'll match it up to the baseline power profile to confirm that the clothes washer cycle was actually run and completed. Um, I may, if that isn't, isn't um, evident, if the completion of the cycle is not evident from the data, then I might review the video footage, talk to the team. There's other ways to gather this information. Um, so once I've looked at all that and I've determined, yep, the team did complete that clothes washer cycle per the rules, I would say, all right, they earned 100% of the points there. And therefore they earned this number of points, which is the number, let me remind you, um, if we go to the element group, so 0.345 rounded off, that is, let's see, that's how many points per element for the hot water task. All right, so that's where that number comes from. And if we move on to the next one, cooking, CK. I have uh, lots of abbreviations in here because I didn't want this sheet to get incredibly wide. It's already wide enough. So hot water is HW, CW is clothes washer, uh, DW is dishwasher. It's pretty obvious. All right, so for the cooking task, you need to reduce the height of the water in the pot by boiling. You need to reduce it by three inches. Uh, so let's say the team reduced it by three inches here. So they earned 100% of the points. That's how many points they got for that task. And there you go. Uh, next one, dishwasher. I need to remind myself here. Um, dishwasher. The minimum max cycle temperature for full points is 49 degrees. 
So let's say the cycle got up to 60 degrees, like during the, sani the sanitizing part of the cycle, which is when it happens typically. Um, 60 degrees, so that's above the minimum requirement. They earned 100% of the points. So that's how many points they got for that task. Next we have lighting. So use, again, looking at all the data, looking at primarily the, um, the power profile of the lighting circuits that that's how I'll be that's the primary way I'll be confirming that the lights were kept on during the three hour period uh, let's assume I confirm that and so the team earns a hundred percent of those points same thing goes for the home electronics that works pretty much you know exactly the same way and there you go that's all the tasks so that's a example of um, how I would enter the data for one of the teams so again I would do the same thing four more times, one for each of the other teams. So um, to summarize, in, in the tasks sheet, there's one row per team per day. On the monitor data calcs sheet, there is one row per team per hour. And I think by now you know why that is, because uh, those, those elements of the competition are scored on an hourly basis, and the tasks are scored once per day. All right, um, so we go on and on repeating this cycle every day. Um, we do the, uh, we, you know, I enter the monitor data twice per day, once before the tasks begin, once after the tasks are completed, and then the task data is entered once per day. Probably in the beginning of the competition, I'm sure we're going to have a lot of issues and confusion and chaos it's always like that at the beginning of one of these competitions so even though the tasks are scheduled to be completed by noon and, and you do need to complete them by noon um, it may be several hours before the data is entered uh, and appearing in the engine here but uh, we'll get more and more efficient both you and I will get more efficient as the competition goes on all right so we do that over and over every day and then we finally get to the end um, after all the measured contests are complete and that's when scores from the juries are awarded so we'll say Dofar earned 100% they did a awesome job 100% in each of these and this is very simple so they earned 100 points in each of those contests so um, Let's see, if we were going to kind of briefly summarize how Dofar did, and again, I didn't, um, you know, in order to really complete the whole competition, I would need to enter data for all the, um, all the timestamps for the entire competition. And actually, let me do that real quick here. Um, so we have all 696 hours in the competition. Just copy that down, expand DOFAR all the way down, and we'll assume that they were remarkably consistent <coughs> and they had the same temperatures and humidities and, and so on throughout the entire competition. And unfortunately, they never produced power. They consumed a net of one kilowatt hours every single day. So if we go to the energy balance, sheet we'll see that minus one kilowatt hours per day for nine 696 hours is minus 696 kilowatt hours so that is way below the um, the minimum allowed kilowatt hours to earn partial points you need to have at least minus 50 to earn partial partial points be you have to be net positive zero net zero or positive to earn all the available points so this team will, when I, when I change this number to 1, um, which I'll do right now, we're going to see that Dofar earns 0 points for the energy balance contest. They will earn all the available points for the, um, for the comfort zone contest and for the fridge and freezer element groups within the appliances, lighting, and electronics contest. They will also earn let me do the same thing here and um, fill in their score for the entire competition. 
or fill in the data. All right, so I will enter all those timestamps here, fill this down, and then copy all the data. Again, we're coming up with a scenario where they earn all the points except for they're going to get a zero in the energy balance. All right, so I'll go to each of these, drag it down. Lighting, home electronics, and that's it. All right, so if all goes well in the scoring engine here, the team will, and again, they've earned all the points for the juried contest. So they should earn uh, 100 points in the first seven contests and then zero points in energy balance, which is contest eight. So let's go to the scoreboard and verify this. So, um, yep, it looks like it worked. So they earned 700 gross points in overall. They didn't have any penalty or bonus points, which means they had a net score of 700. And they're currently alone in first place. Um, and so the team that's in second place here is actually HCT. Now, um, all four of these other teams earned 100 points, hypothetically, in the energy balance contest because the um, I didn't enter any energy data for them. If you recall, I didn't enter any of their data in this sheet here. So therefore, their net energy at the time when I changed this flag to one was zero, and net zero earns all the points for for the energy balance contest. So uh, this is kind of a artificial example, but um, they it just so happens that in this scenario, um, which is not the way it would work in reality because obviously all the teams will be um, will have data coming from the data loggers and, and from the tasks for all of the teams every day but the way it worked out here is that they all happen to earn 100 points in energy balance um, now HCT distinguished itself at this point because they also had the 50 points for the uh, the bonus which we entered that was the first thing we entered um, so therefore HCT got 100 plus 50 is 150. All the others only had 100. So HCT is alone in second place. The other three teams are tied for third, hence the T3 annotation there. And that's, uh, and, and finally, these uh, columns here in the beginning indicate that 800 points have been awarded so far. And therefore, because 800 out of 800 have been awarded, 100% of the competition is complete. And um, you'll note that even though, the reason why this shows up as, as 100, even though I didn't fill in any data for the other four teams, that's because how complete the competition is, is based on the latest timestamp that the scoring engine sees in these tables. So because it sees a timestamp, which is equal to um, the very last timestamp in, let me scroll all the way down. So 12 noon on December 2nd, that's the very last one hour scoring period. Um, so because in the monitor data calc sheet, we have a timestamp of 12, 12 noon on December 2nd, the scoring engine says, okay, the competition is complete because we've reached that last timestamp. All right, so that's kind of the uh, the summary of how things work. Uh, we'll take a break here and then come back to run through a few other scenarios so you'll kind of see some of the, um, the calculations that the engine will do in cases of partial points and zero points and when overrides need to happen, things like that. All right, I will be right back. Okay, we're back. And um, so what I'm going to do is kind of pick up where we left off in the last example. And next I'm going to very quickly do an example scenario where a team earns no points. And so the unlucky team 
will be oh I don't want to pick anybody uh, but <laughs> let's say the team at the end in alphabetical order because Dofar was first in alphabetical order so that would be H S Q U but that doesn't that doesn't mean anything S Q U don't worry about it um, all right so what we're gonna say there is that for all these timestamps enter all those down here all right we're gonna say that SQU was way out of spec on all their measurements so their temperature was was zero it was freezing in the house the whole time and that was the case throughout all of the house so all four sensors read zero degrees C the relative humidity was let's say it was uh, 100% so basically it was snowing in the house the whole time I guess that's what that means here and we'll say 100% which is obviously also way out of spec we'll say their refrigerator temperature let's say they never turned their refrigerator on they forgot and so therefore the refrigerator temperature is 0 degrees same as room temperature which is 0 degrees the freezer temperature is also zero degrees and let's say they consumed a lot of power every day so they were at minus 10 kilowatt hours per hour all right so if my math is right in my head here I think they get zero points for fridge and freezer let me make sure here again I'm trying to force a scenario where the team earns zero points so refrigerator you earn zero points if you're at zero degrees C if they were at 0.1 degrees C they would have earned partial points but they weren't um, for the freezer you need to be below minus nine to earn partial points so they were above that alright so there we go there's our hopefully that means they got zero points in the monitored tasks or the monitored uh, element groups so let's just do, do a quick check here and make sure yeah their score is still zero if we go over to the gross scores their score is zero for comfort zone and still zero for appliances lighting and electronics and it's also zero for energy balance if you recall I've already set the um, the flag to one indicating that it's time to calculate the energy balance points alright so now let's move on to the tasks and unfortunately let's give let's force them uh, to have zero points in all of the tasks as well <clears throat> so again we'll go SQU next time I uh, do a demo like this I'll pick on another team other than SQU uh, no offense SQU alright so we have hot water temperature um, they didn't get it hot enough it's it was only 20 degrees C um, now let's say uh, the volume is they didn't deliver enough water they only delivered 100 liters and it took them too long to complete the hot water draw they had problems in every way imaginable there and so let's say that happened to them throughout the entire competition and it looks like they got yep they got zero points for the hot, all the hot water draws um, let's say that they uh, they never got their clothes washer it never arrived from the manufacturer so they don't have one and therefore they never did any clothes washer tasks they got zero there cooking uh, alright where am I cooking okay uh, all right. Let's say that the uh, the the cooker didn't have enough power to get to boil any water. So it heated it up a little, but it didn't drop the uh, the height of the water at all. So they get zero there. That was a zero inch water height drop, or delta water height, as I call it here. Dishwasher. 
let's say that they ran the dishwasher, but they forgot to, um, they ran it on the, let's say, cold cycle, or just a rinse or something like that. And therefore, the temperature never got to the required level. So they got zero there. Lighting, um, the lighting contractor never finished the, jo the job and none of the lights work. They're just relying on sunlight and moonlight. So they get 0% there. And home electronics, for whatever reason, I'm, I'm tired of making up reasons, <laughs> they earn zero there. All right, so that takes us to the end. Um, now we move on to the juried contest. And they weren't on site when the juries appeared, so the juries disqualified them. And uh, the good thing is they didn't get any penalties. So um, now they should have earned zero points. And there you go. Um, so they got zero in every contest. Um, zero penalties. So zero plus zero is zero. They're ranked fifth. And uh, that's the end of that unfortunate situation. And uh, let's see. Next we're going to... Um, going to look at a scenario where a team earns half the points. And here's where you'll see some of the calculations doing their work. This will take a little more time, but um, I'll try to move along as quick as possible. All right, let's pick on the team that is uh, alphabetically in the middle. So we have, uh, we have DOFAR, Geotech, then HCT. HCT. So we're expecting them to earn 400 points if we enter all these all the data correctly so that they earn half of the available points. But keep in mind they have that 50 point bonus. So they should earn, I'm trying to get over here, uh, half of 800 is 400, but they earn the 50 bonus points so they should end up with 450. Let's see if we can make that happen. All right. So we're going to enter all the uh, all the timestamps and these um, these pound symbols are because the uh, that's just because the column needs to be expanded a little bit. There we go. So let me actually it'll be simpler just to copy these over from the schedule sheet. All right. Let's go all the way down to the bottom, HCT. All right. Okay, so first we have the temperatures. Now the uh, temperature subcontest here Teams earn, so what temperature would they have to be at to earn 50% of the points? Either halfway between 22 and 25 or halfway between 27 and 30. So let's say they were at 23 and a half. That should be half. And it's a linear function, so that's why they get 50%. So 23 and a half. Copy that over. Next we have relative humidity. All right, so halfway between 25 and 50 or halfway between 70 and 80? This math is easier, so let's say 75%. 75. For all four sensors. And the refrigerator. Uh, halfway between minus 15 and s minus 9 is minus 12. Whoops. All right, minus 12. And next we have freezer. 
Oh, I'm sorry, I just did freezer by mistake. Um, so freezer should be minus 12. Okay, refrigerator. Halfway between 4.4 and 5.6 is um, 5.0. 5. 5 All right, let's see if I did that right. Now, half, um, okay, half the points in the energy balance contest would have to be minus 25 kilowatt hours for the whole for the whole evaluation period. So what I'm going to do here, just to keep it simple, is say, let's say they had this influx of power right in the first hour, and then they were net zero after that. So all that should add up to minus 25, and they should get half of the points for energy balance. All right, so let's check how we did here. Um, did the team earn 50% of available points for temperature? Uh, all right, let me go to the very end where it says final temp percent of max, that is, 50%. All right, good. Humidity. Again, we'll go to the end. Final humidity percent of max, 50. Good. Final refrigerator percent of ma uh, percent of max, 50%. Freezer. Fifty percent, final freezer percent of max, and net energy. We'll have to go to the uh, scoreboard sheet to look at that. We'll do that later. Next, we move on to the tasks. All right. So we have HCT. Again, I'm going to go over here to the schedules. Copy that, paste it, HCT. All right, first of all, let's say that, so the, the scoring function here, only the temperature, it's basically, you get all the point, you're, you can only disqualify yourself by not drawing enough water or by taking too long to do it. The only thing that has a, um, linear function here is temperature and that has to be halfway between 38 and 43 so that would be 40.5 alright so let's say that they did draw 150 liters as required they did it in 30 minutes or 1800 seconds as required so they did fine there but they only delivered 40 and a half degree water All right, so hot water final percent is 50. All right, clothes washer, that's easy. For whatever reason, I just decided that they only deserve 50% of the available points there. And therefore, the final percent of max is 50 for clothes washer. For the cooking, let's see, the... Uh, all right, so halfway between 0.5 and 3 inches of water drop. Half of 3 minus 0.5 is 2.5. Half of that is 1.25. 0 0.5 plus 1.25 is 1.75. All right, that happened every day. And so they earned final percent of max 50. Dishwasher criteria halfway between 46 and 49 is 47.5 and again that's the maximum temperature measured during the cycle and the measurements um, occur they're probably going to occur every 20 seconds so uh, one of those readings at the end of a 20 second period has to be at least 40 uh, 49 in order to earn all the points. Here we're giving them 47 and a half to force it to be 50%. Final percent of max, 50. All right, lighting. 
is also 50. There you go, final percent of max 50 and home electronics. I'm forcing that to be 50. So there you go. All right, that's all the tasks. Now in the juried contest, they earned, the jury gave them 50% for each one. And that's that. And again, they have the 50 points for the uh, penalties, that for the bonus they got. Um, and in the energy balance sheet, just to confirm, you'll recall that we entered, uh, we gave them minus 25 kilowatt hours for that first hour and zero for the rest of the hours. So they got a total of minus 25. So let's see how we did there. So again, the team should have gotten 450 points for half of the 800 available points and then 50 for the bonus. And okay, that worked. 450, so they got, let me move all the way over. They got 400 for their gross score, 50 bonus, 450 net. That puts them alone in second place. So there you go, there's three different scenarios. One where a team earns all points, they get a perfect score. One where a team earns no points, um, except for, uh, yeah, that's right. We did force SQU to earn zero points in energy balance. Um, and then a team earns 50% uh, of the available points. Um, okay, let me, uh, I'm going to show you a few other things. And here we're, I'm just going to look at, uh, I'm just going to go create the first row for um, what's one of the teams we haven't picked on yet. Uh, GU Tech. All right, so GU Tech. All right, so let, what's that first timestamp again? There we go. So in this first hour, and actually, um, I want you to be able to see the uh, the headers, what color they are. So I'm actually going to create, I'm going to create a new row here. Uh, let's see. Let me just make sure that all the all the formulas are yeah that that doesn't that doesn't work I need to add it at the end um, let me try one more thing no I don't uh, let's see yeah I shouldn't be entering data here in the at the I know what I'll do nah I'm not gonna do that Forget it. Okay, so what I'm going to do instead is um, I am going to remove this. I'm going to delete all the data here. And this again, this is only for the sake of this example. All right, it looks like my computer froze up here for a second. It recovered. All right. So I'm going to delete everything here. Whoops. Okay. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say, I'll, I'll just stick with Dofar. All right. I just want to show you some of these uh, overrides and um, other things going on. So again, I'm going to change this back to. Uh, 1 p.m. I think everything is a little delayed with my mouse and cursor and because of the the screen um, the screen capture I noticed a little bit of a delay before alright so um, okay let's start with that original situation where they got 26 26 26 I'm just gonna okay I'm gonna change it back to what it was before All right, so let's. Uh, what I want to show you here is how an example of how um, if one of the sensors read 20 degrees, which let me see in the criteria here, 
Yeah, so 22 degrees. You have to be at least 22 degrees to earn any points. So if they're at 20, even though if three of the sensors are in between 25 and 27, one of them is completely outside the allowable range. So therefore, the worst of the measurements is the one that counts. That should be the 20 degree reading. So they should earn zero points for this hour. And so you can see here, what the engine is doing is testing what their score would have been for each of the sensors. And it's going to say, OK, zero is the worst. So that's the score that counts for that hour. All right. And so they, their final temp percent of max is zero. All right. And that's also the way the relative humidity uh, algorithm works. All right. Um, let me change that back to 26. And um, let's see. What's another thing to show here? Uh, let's just say, all right, the um, the allowable ranges here. All right. Let's just do another test. All right. So if their temperature was 29, they should earn one third of the available points. So it should be 0.333. So let's say one of the sensors was 29. So again, that's the only one that doesn't earn full points, 100%. It should earn 0.333. And, and I'll refer you to the linear, um, the linear function published in the rules for that algorithm. So there you go. That sensor got 33%. And the final temp percent of max was 33%. All right, so that's just an example of how the linear functions are applied and how partial points are awarded. Um, all right. You know, I, I could show you other, other examples of stuff like that, but it's, it really works all the same. So let me move on to um, show you what the blue cells are for, the blue headers. Now, there may be cases where there's a problem with the sensor. And let's say, for example, that one of these sensors had a problem and um, it read 100 degrees C. So that wasn't because the house was 100 degrees. It was because there was a issue with the sensor. And this will happen. There will be problems with sensors. And therefore, um, I'm going to have to make manual overrides. So, And I'm going to do that in the most fair way possible. I, I'll always first notify the team that has the problem, or they'll notify me if they happen to be looking at the data. Um, the first thing to do is address the problem. So, so get the sensor working properly again. Once that's done, we'll have to look at how the data was affected by the problem. And we will figure out a fair solution to the problem. And, and I will put notes here in the spreadsheet that indicate that describe the problem. And um, if, if necessary, an explanation of how it was resolved. And the purpose of that is, first of all, so that I remember uh, why things, why overrides were made, and also so that the other teams can can see how we dealt with the situation. And if they have an issue with how we dealt with it, they think it wasn't fair, they could speak to me about it, which I encourage them to do first. And if we cannot come to an agreement on a fair solution, then the team can uh, uh, issue a protest. And it can be adjudicated by the Research Council, which is serving as the Protest Resolution Committee. So um, let's say in this case, we had that problem with sensor four. I know it wasn't it wasn't um, 100 degrees. And based on the trend of that sensor, let's say the problem was fixed in time for this next one hour period. So um, the temperature started out, at, it went back to 26 degrees. So clearly the trend is that this sensor is at 26 degrees. And this was a problem. It was an anomaly. So the resolution here would be clear. It would, it would be to override that 100 degree reading and force it to be 26 instead. And I would put a note here, comment, I don't know, sensor, sensor shorted. Um, correction 
based Ugh. on extrapolation. All right, so some comment. All right, so 26. Now what you'll see here is that, so without going into the, how this formula works, basically what it's doing is it's saying, um, it's saying if the manual for the manual zone for cell here is blank, then count the cell that I've highlighted here. If this cell is not blank, this this W2, if this is not W2, that's where I'm getting that W2 from. Um, if that cell is not blank, then count the override, which is 26 degrees. So that's why under final zone four, it's 26 degrees and not 100, because it saw that this cell was not blank, which means that there's an override that's been applied. So therefore, the team earned 100% of the points. All right. That's, uh, that's that override scenario. Now, another override scenario is that um, now this is, uh, this is something that happened uh, at several solar decathlons where one time there was a grid outage and lots of scores. I won't get into all the details of how this happened, but lots and lots of scores were affected. And it wasn't for, for reasons I won't get into here. <laughs> It was not appropriate to go back and, and change all the um, measurements. Instead, what we needed to do was we decided that it was more appropriate to go in and compensate the team by giving them a manual, a manually applied percent of max in some cases. And in other cases, we said, you know, it's more appropriate to give them a number of points. And this was based on some complex analysis that we, uh, that we had to do. To, to mitigate this problem. So let's say, um, okay, I'm gonna pick the next row here. Uh, all right, so if you recall this row, the team had 26 degrees for all the sensors. But let's say that we realized that, you know, it wasn't, um, uh, I wouldn't even suggest a scenario. There's so many possibilities, but for whatever reason, the 26 degree temperature readings did not accurately reflect what was going on and therefore we feel like it's more appropriate that the team should earn 75% of the available points. All right. So in column AF here, it says calculated temp percent of max. So that was the calculated percentage of max that the team should have earned based on the actual temperature readings. For whatever reason, we decide that no, they should get 75% instead. And then you could see that uh, the number of points has gone down here. And their total, their final temp percent of max is 75. All right. Now, in another scenario, let's say that we weren't, it was more convenient for whatever reason to adjust the team's number of points. So instead of changing a sensor value or change or applying a percent of max override, we say, no, we should, we, we want to give this team um, we want to give them 0.1 points instead of 0 0.10777. So what we do there is say 0.1, and therefore the even though they the calculated temp percent of max is 100, the calculated temp points is is based on 100%. We say nope, they should get 0.1 instead, and therefore the final temp number of points is 0.1. And in the final column here for temperature, this is a calculate. This is a, basically a calculation of the percent of max based on the number of final points that they earned. So um, they got 92.8 percent, and that's that's 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.107759, which is how many points you get um, if you've earned all the points. So that happens to be 92.8 in this case. So that's how the overrides work. There's several different kinds of them. And you can see there, that if you review the spreadsheet, they, um, they work pretty much the same way in, in all these cases here. All right. OK. Now, the same thing applies to the tasks. Um, I don't think, and really, let me just make sure, but 
they work. I'm just trying to see if there's if there's one scenario that I haven't explained yet. All right, so this would be a override of the percent of max for hot water, override of the number of points. We just talked about both of those scenarios. This would be clothes washer percent of max points, percent of max points, percent of max points, percent of max points, and percent of max points. All right. So all the blue columns are that are those kinds of overrides. Um, now the you'll notice that the tasks sheet, which I'm on right now, doesn't have any of these blue columns like the ones here where it was an override of the actual measurement. And that's because we want to keep a permanent record of the data logger values themselves that come in from the data logger. Um, and so therefore, instead of directly, instead of directly overriding the value in these green columns, we want to preserve that. So in our example here, we had a reading of, um, uh, what was it? Let me go further over. That, that bad sensor that read 100 degrees. We want to leave that 100 degrees in there just for the permanent archive. Instead, we're going to override that reading. Now, in the case of the tasks, all these entries of measurements are manual entries. I mean, meaning that they come from an analysis of data collected. In this case, it's for the hot water draw. So there's a bunch of data collected for the hot water draw. I'm going to look at all that data, do an analysis, and determine um, what, the, what the volume weighted average temperature was for during the hot water draw and I manually hit enter here in the spreadsheet. So if the adjust if there's a problem with the sensor, that the record of, of the original readings as well as the correction and the comments and, and things like that will be in that supporting spreadsheet where the data basically think of it as um, I have a temperature reading every 20 seconds, I have a volume uh, reading every 20 seconds. I need to determine the volume weighted average temperature um, using all that 20 second temperature data, all the 20 second volume data. I come up with the with the volume weighted average temperature and enter it here in this green column. Um, if there was a problem with all that 20 second data and a correction of some sort or an override, that would appear in that so supporting spreadsheet. All that's all that 20 second data is not included in the scoring engine, it's really not part of the scoring engine. It's part of the data collection. Um, the the post the processing of the data logger data is what it is, and all those supporting spreadsheets will be available to you um, in a folder, most likely on the shared folder. Um, but here in the scoring engine, I only enter the um, the the out, the final result of that supporting spreadsheet. Same thing goes for, for the volume in this case and the number of seconds. All right, um, let me just see if there's anything else to discuss here. Jury contest, those are simple. I think penalties, bonuses are simple. And we've discussed the rest of it. Um, all right, I think we've covered all the highlights here. Okay, hopefully you find this useful, and um, please refer back to this spreadsheet, this uh, presentation as needed um, during the, you know, preferably review, watch this video before, well before the competition begins or the evaluation period begins so that you can um, ask questions or let me know if there's any bugs or anything. Um, and familiarize yourself with it so that we can uh, we can start the evaluation period as efficiently as possible. And um, all right, I think that's everything we wanted to cover. And thanks for watching. And good luck in the competition. Thank you. Bye.